Hey guys, Boston Bruce here with a little, uh, not so much recap, a little what's going on in the game, a little strategy, all that stuff before my turn. And what's going on? Uh, this is the income chart, I believe it's correct. I was off before on uh, the Russians and the Germans, and we were off on the English tech chart. And here's the big one right here. Right there, strategic rockets, one away. I look at that as a 50-50 shot, even though it's a nine. I mean, the odds ain't bad. This is what I got for a score currently. Seven, five, six. Uh, they took a chance, not trying to take Festing or Oprah. They went with the deuce. I'd have made the same bet. I'm a gambler like that. What's going to happen here, though? We could possibly lose that, but we have Spain a possibility. Uh, so they can always knock us down to six, basically whenever they want. Maybe we get back to seven. Uh, the Allies are at five, and, you know, they don't say much about how they're going to get to eight. You know, they don't want to mention that. Uh, there's a lot going on, even as uh, things are going on. Communists will be back to seven. I don't think they could take Istanbul myself. But, you know, I've seen stranger things happen. Oh, what's going on? I like to move here. Put no subs and destroyers over there. <coughs> I mean, the destroyers and the, yeah, the destroyers and the sub because uh, there's a little vulnerability to Malta with the amount of aircraft in Syria, Egypt. These attack transports over here in Lower Egypt, a couple of transports over here. Because whatever they take, they can reinforce. I mean, this stops them from uh, going into Malta probably because now the transports are kind of, you know, you only got four. You don't have a lot of ships for fodder and the subs can't hit boats. I mean, the subs can't hit planes, so. I mean, bottom of it, underbelly of Europe is a little soft. You know, right now, uh, I expect the English to lend lease again over here. I expect the Russians to move down even more. Uh, too bad they didn't have long-range aircraft or something to be able to drop a paratrooper, in, paratrooper somewhere in the United States. It is empty. England, not super filled up either. There's some units there. I mean, it's a real nice spot up here. I like this. I mean, from here, they can try and move into Russia, into Finland. The key is, this is two points here for the Russia. Uh, it's a point for the uh, Soviets that they're going to have to protect. I mean, Warsaw, Romania. Yeah. I mean, Panzer J put a lot of mechanized units here. He's got a force here, too. He could possibly hit Poland, but what's nice over here also is because we believe they will not take Festing or Oprah this turn. They want to keep the game at a tie at seven between the Russians and the Axis. And from here, you can reinforce West Germany. I mean, yeah, West Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark. So it's really a nice spot. Uh... The hard part is holding it for one turn. We'll see what the English do this turn if they move anything. Or save it for maybe uh, an overlord attack somewhere into Europe. They do have a transport here also that they could use. Uh, and there's a couple more here. So, I mean, the transports are available. And England is pretty safe because there's no naval transports for the Germans. And they don't have any airborne. So they can empty out London and make it a, make an assault with three, four, five, six possible transports, and that would be tough to hold. It would be tough for us to hold. It, it wouldn't be tough for them to hold. It would be tough to get back, uh, depending where it is. So that's one thing going on there. Spain, like we said, oh, we got a medium arm of this turn. Maybe the, maybe the Italians might send something. Who knows? Take a shot at it next turn. See what happens. 
possibly gain that extra point. Uh, you can see also up here they're ready. I mean, they're going to be threatening Transcaucasia, which is, you start doing that, and I mean, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Russians there. Problem is, anything, if uh, he takes that, he takes it, he doesn't have much left, they'll come right back in there and take it. Like I said, with the three transports, the froggies, they can reinforce it. They got three fighters that have spent the whole game doing not much of anything. It's up a little defensive protection, but not not a lot. Uh, what else? All right, well, that's what's going on over there. Now on my side of the board. What's going to happen on the next Japanese turn? Well, I can tell you one thing that's going to happen for sure, and this is an automatic up here. I will sink that naval transport up there with a medium bomber. It'll be landing in the Corral Islands. Uh, I could have did it last turn. I didn't. Uh, so those troops up there will be stuck up there for a little while. The funny thing is, I'm thinking about that attack, and I'm saying, oh, man, i got to roll a seven. What if I miss? Then, it, then it's not dead, and I wasted that medium bomber. I forget that I could stay there until I kill it. <laughs> kind of uh, funny, but, you know, that's what I was thinking for a minute. Uh, what else is going to happen? I have so many options. Like I said, that's why I also had the option of doing a big invasion over there if I wanted. I could have did that. I could have did a big invasion into Wake over here and taken that. I could do a big invasion over here into the, uh, what is that? The Mott Caroline Islands. What I will wind up doing is bombing the port, Hambone. <laughs> I will be bombing the port. Uh, and uh, I guess he would have the option of scrambling into the sea zone, which is empty, but I will be sending a fighter along with it from Honshu. One, two, three, four, five, and he'll land in Guam. Six. Because I got to protect Guam. You know, he didn't even mention that in his video about the Spear of Influence. That's an easy point for them to take. And they go last. So I got to be able to take it and hold it through the American and the English turn. Uh, the other big thing going on here is the KMT. They want to evolve it. I mean, it took me, I spent some time watching and looking. And there's a few vulnerable locations and I'm sure uh, they've seen it in Formosa, which is worth two points to the Chinese if they take it. I mean, all I had was a fighter and a militia there. So there'll be more than that there next turn. Because they have all these fighters here and they got a couple airborne. I mean, they take that, they give it to the Chinese, puts them at six. They go eight, ten, take Shen Shi, that's twelve, one more, thirteen. Can't let it happen. Not gonna let it happen. That was another battle I thought of doing also. Was a major Bunzai attack into Kusejuan. With 11 ground units. And 10 aircraft. I still may do it. I mean, I know I would win the battle. There's no doubt. My air force would get there and I'd lose a lot of ground units. But basically the KMT would be reduced to uh, the troops in Quang Tung. Four useless KMT infantry. Uh, and the groups up in uh, Shejuan. Three more useless KMT infantry. And, uh, you know, a couple other units. So that's also a possibility that may go down. Uh, we're looking at the North Island of the Philippines. Uh, I like that transport sitting there all alone. I'd like to get that the hell out of there. I mean, the Americans only have... Uh, they got a transport over here. The English got one here. The Americans got one here. That's going to be gone. They got one here. It's either going to be stuck in port or gone. And the one up here is going to be gone. Leaving them with one in Midway. Hard to take a lot of land territories with one transport. Uh, so those are some of the possible things I've looked at. I also looked at a major invasion of... Midway, that may be a possibility too. I have not decided. I mean, if I move my entire navy there into port, <clears throat> I mean, I'll be have about seven, eight, nine militia. He won't have a transport on the board on this side of the map. 
be pretty hard to take it back. Uh, that's a possibility also. Uh, so those are things I'm kicking around for my turn on this side of the board. You know, it's where do I want to go? What do I want to do? I could do nothing at all and probably just hang on to my three points. The big key is, is getting that one point back away from uh, the Allies, the Spear of Influence. But, again, I don't want the, the uh, Russians to win either. Uh, so, I mean, it's a tight game, and it's been tight. It would have been nice if it ended last turn. We could have been victorious. Uh, and even this turn, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, it's probably going to be another tie at the end of this turn, so... Odds are we're going to be going to turn uh, uh, 19 for sure. So anyway, the longer it goes, the worse it is for us because we got less and less money all the time. The amount of money the Americans and the uh, Far East Command and the British and the Anzacs, even the KMT now gets, you know, four, five, four, six dollars a turn, you know. It's not the chump change they used to get when they only owned Yunnan and the Burma Road was closed. So we gotta, we're got we hoping for uh, this game to end, but I don't think it's going to end on turn uh, 18. I just don't think see it happening. I think it's going to be another 7-7 seven, seven tie. And, you know, that uh, means we're going to another one, which means that the longer it goes, the worse it is for us. I mean, it's so hard to to hold on to our stuff over here spread out. I mean, with the amount of money they're making. I mean, so what I'm going to do, I'm not sure. I may not do anything. I may do no attacks except this one for sure. That's a guarantee. Uh, as is the Philippines. I mean, that's almost... Unless I change my mind and I decide to go for Midway or an all-out attack in China. You know? Because, I mean, there's a lot of ways they can evolve over here. You know, it took me a while looking around when I realized, you know, these two air transports for the British uh, could easily, with a good group of fighters and bombers in uh, Siam, he's got three fighters, a medium bomber, a uh, medium bomber in Calcutta. He could hit uh, Formosa with that whole stack and be worth two. You give Hanans, uh makes it three, Kwong Tong four, Yunnan. So you're up to six, you know. So it wouldn't be hard for him the way my board is right now. Eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13. So, I mean, the possibility is there, you know, for the KMT to evolve. You know, and it's my job not to let it happen. So anyway, that's some of the stuff going on in the game. Uh... Like I said, it's been a fun game. It's close. It's just, uh, I want it to end. <laughs> so, we'll see how it goes. I mean, and it's, you know, that's what's going on. I mean, Soviets are getting three for a bonus. The Brits are still getting five. They, But that's going to go back down. They're going to get that one. The Anzacs won't get it. I'm going to be in the way. Far East Command getting their bonus. The Chinese are getting theirs. The United States... Germany's no longer getting any bonuses. Uh, possibility that the uh, Eng the Italians will lose their bonus. As far as the Chinese, they've been losing bonuses right along, but they're still getting six. And if they could take back the Philippines, they'd, get, they'd be back up to eight. So we'll see. I mean, I'm just like I said, I'm hoping for the game to end, but I don't think it's a possibility it's going to end on turn 18. So... Like I said, we'll see what I decide to do. I hate uh, coming out of ports. You know, I could lose my one keto bataille point. Uh, right now, we're currently, we're like like I said, we're in first, but, and we could stay tied for first, but the key number is going to be when someone gets the eight. And that's either, for us to get the eight is going to be extremely hard. Uh, because, like I said, we got a whole festing Europa through the initial attack, which is very hard. Uh, because you don't get a chance to take it back unless the Italians have a huge force somewhere in uh, France. And even then, the Americans can go and do it, take it right back. So that's going to be hard for us to hold. You know, yeah, we can win, uh, <clears throat> we can win Spain, maybe, <clears throat> which gets us back to seven, but 
there's the possibility the Allies and the common turn get into eight. I mean, eventually, they're going to be able to build enough forces no matter what, and they're going to be able to come from Malta. I mean, with the amount of money they're getting, and with England in no threat, they don't have to spend any money up there. They can put all their money down here, you know. Same with the Americans. All their money's going in Portugal, England, and San Francisco. You know, they're not even building troops in the homeland, so. And they're just getting more and more cash, so. I mean, it's a time. The time is ticking for us, you know, and it's and it's the way the game should be. I mean, if it's if you didn't have a variable game inning, I mean, if you ended the game on turn 17, the Al the Axis would probably win 95% of the time, you know, so. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta play this way, and hopefully, you know, we can hang on. Uh, you know, I'm still fucking trying to stay alive out here, uh, but you know, it's not easy. So we'll see. That's why I said the stack over here in Szechuan of armor and tactical bomber and a fighter. I mean, that's his units. That's his punch. You know, this is not punch. The, the group in Tuong Tung does not punch, you know, so. You go to attack, look what happened here. He had to lose a fight because of all the cavalry running away. Uh, so anyway, that's where we're at now. Uh, so I got a lot of things to think about before I do my turn. I don't expect Russia to even, they may walk into Northern Manchuria if they do, what the hell. No biggie. Uh. I know they ain't attacking Suiyan, so uh, I think they're a little worried too about the uh, Chinese sneaking into Mongolia a little bit. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Have a good night.